All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back. In my last video, uh, we were uh, draining down the water heater and uh, changed the relief valve up top, and we were attempting to change the anode rod. Uh, now, in that video, you were seeing me attempt to remove the anode rod with these breaker bars and sockets. Um, historically, that's how we did it uh, on job sites, but historically, I also had a helper to stabilize the tank for me uh, while I loosened the anode, or vice versa, I would stabilize the tank while they loosen the anode. In any event, it proved to be a lot more difficult when I'm by myself, and that was the first time I've ever tried to do it by myself. Uh, so today I'm ditching these breaker bars and we are going to use an impact gun. Because thankfully in this day and age we have cordless impact tools that we have access to. Um, now this is the first time I'm going to use an impact on an anode, so I'm hoping it's going to go well. I'm hoping the drill is not too strong and strip out the head or something silly, but we're just going to see how this goes. So to start, just like the last time, we need to make sure the power is off to the tank. You don't want to drain any water off of your water heater until you've got power off or you will pretty much instantly burn out an element. Uh, so make sure that your power is off, uh, close your incoming water supply, and then also open up a hot tap or something upstairs to drain out that water. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get a garden hose attached to the bottom here, and we only have to drain off a little bit of water uh, to actually do this. And that was the other thing I think I did wrong the last time was just to take too much water off. So I'm actually going to use this clear hose as a bit of a sight glass and uh, and that will help me make sure that I only take an inch or two of water off of the top of the tank. Alright, so I'm just going to get that down in the drain and we've got to get a screwdriver to open that up. So we're just going to open the drain there at the bottom. Again, make sure your power is off and your incoming water is off. And you're just going to do that. And I'm just going to drain off a little water. Not a whole lot. Okay. Like I say, it does not have to be a lot of water. And as you can see, it looks like I've drained down to about that point. I want to take just a little more than that. So I'm going to put my thumb over there. I'm going to set that in the drain. Take a little bit of water off of there. All right, now that should be good. All right, you see now we've taken down quite a bit of water there. All right, so we're going to close this, this relief. We're going to close our drain. And I'm just going to tuck that back in the, in the floor drain so it doesn't get all over my feet. So now we're going to take our impact. We're going to go down into where the anode rod is there. Now we want 
to take it out by hand once it's loosened. All right. And this anode rod has been in here, I believe, three or four years now. So you see how nasty that is. There's almost nothing left of it. So that is what your anode rod will look like after a couple of years. All right. And it looks like this is absolutely the perfect time to get it because we're getting right down to the wire here. There's a wire that runs all the way through that anode. And as you get down to that wire, there's, uh, there's not much protection left on the tank itself. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to take that anode and we're going to replace it with an electronic type. Now these are uh, considered to be quite a bit better than your standard anode. Um, now this one, what they want me to do is they want me to actually stretch this to where it's almost near the bottom of the tank. So I'm going to go to, I think about there. I think right about there. Just give it one final stretch. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to drop that down in there. And before I get it all the way down in, <coughs> we're going to put a little thread sealant on it. All right. We're just going to drop that down in there. All right. Now we take our element wrench because the head on this powered anode is actually bigger than the head on the standard anode. You have an inch and a sixteenth on the standard anode and it's an inch and a half on the powered anode. So a little bit bigger. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this bigger socket here and we're going to take this in this troublesome breaker bar and I just need to get that snug. All right. Do not want that bugger leaking. Now, why am I using the breaker bar and not that drill? Because I don't want to over tighten this. I just want to get it where it's nice and snug in the tank. And uh, not leaking. Okay but we definitely do not want to tighten it into the point where we can't get it out the next time. Okay. Let's give it one more feel with this one. That's pretty good. Just walk it in a little bit. All right, I think that's pretty good. So now, now what we have to do is just quickly run upstairs and shut off our hot tap.
I'm going to shut that off. Okay. And then we come back down here. We're going to open our water line. Again, if you have a, you probably have a ball valve or a, a compression stop valve. And now we're just going to watch down in here and make sure that we don't have a leak as she's filling up. And it looks like we are good. So now we just have to let a little air out of the uh, lines. I gotta look for my pail here. You always wanna make sure that you purge the relief valve because you wanna make sure that there, you see that? A little bit of air in the relief. And you don't want air in your relief valve. You want that relief valve to be seeing all water. So now we just gotta dry up the top of the tank from that tap above. Had a bit of a drip from the tap, but that's normal. Sometimes you end up having to change the guts on that tap. And that's about it. So we have got a powered anode installed now. And I'm just gonna plug that bugger in. And that is it. So I just want you all to see that. We've got that powered anode rod installed in there in the water heater now. All right, so thank you to everybody for joining me today. And uh, my apologies for that video taking a while, but we had uh, a couple busy weeks on calls there. So take care and, uh, and keep following for more videos. Thank you.